tell you about week five tutor plans. But first, I wanted to tell you I have your number cards ready for you. This is a free digital download. So you will see the link in the description below. You can click that and you will have access to these. So I hope you enjoy these. Give me a like if you are enjoying that and you like that. And I'm also going to be bringing other freebies to you soon. Let me know in the comments below if there's any freebies that you would love to see. So let's get started on week five. So I always start with geography and something new to me that I saw another tutor do was to make stations. Now this was kind of fun and interesting to me. So instead of doing geography at the table, they had a map set out in the corner and they did their geography there. They had their history sentence in a different corner and then they had their, their science in a different corner. And they would go around to these different corners and move to the different corners as they did their memory work. I thought that was so inventive and so neat, y'all. There's so much we can learn from each other. So if you want to add that in, I just thought that was a neat way to do geography. So for geography, we are doing the Nile River. And I like to give them a little bit of background. So the Nile River is the longest river in the world. And the Nile River Delta is the opening of the Nile River. So I like to tell them why Upper Egypt is below Lower Egypt. It doesn't make sense on the map test. It does make sense because it reflects the flow of the Nile River from south to north. So that is why they are labeled like that. So for me as a parent, I love to hear that background info. It's not imperative for the students, but I just think it's neat to give a little background. So for geography this week, I have googly eyes. And I like the googly eyes because they're great for girls and boys. And there's all these different sizes. So for these, it's so easy. If you have bigger locations or smaller locations, you can just pick the eyes that fit and have them ready for them. And I always like to let them take them home too because they just think that is so neat to take them home. So I tell them, I hold the googly eye up and they kind of laugh and I say, look for the different locations. And I have them put it up to their eye and they look for it and they can put their eye on the different locations. So that was our fun way to do geography this week. So after we put our googly eyes on, I'll have them trace the different locations with their dry erase marker. Afterwards, I'll have them erase and I will teach them this new song. Now, we don't have very many geographic locations for this week, so it makes it easy to kind of go through them quickly, but have them go through it multiple times and learn really fast. So what I like to do is sing this one to the Jesus Loves Me song. And here's what it'll sound like. So we go, Egypt, Nile River, Upper, Lower Egypt, Nile River Delta, the Egyptian Empire. So that's kind of a cute way to do it. I also have hand motions, so after that I say, do you wanna see the hand motions for this? So we'll start with Egypt and we'll go like this. And then for Nile River, we'll go like this. Remember, it's the longest river. And then for Upper Egypt, we'll step on our tippy toes. And for Lower Egypt, we'll go down. So for the Nile River Delta, it's the opening of our river. So we'll go like this and open our river up. So those are some fun hand motions and we end with the Egyptian Empire. So they like those. That is some fun ways to do geography. And now we will move on to history. Now our history sentence this week is so long. So be ready with those hand motions and practice, practice, practice. Let me just advise you now, this is not one that you remember the morning of. So let me show you those hand motions. So for history today, we will teach them about the Romans. So for our Roman Republic, we're gonna make two R's. And then for Roman Empire, I like to stretch my hands way out because an empire is a large, large place. And then for crowns, I like to put my crown on, so we'll crown. So we'll start with Roman Republic, and then for Roman Empire, we'll have our hands way out, and then for crowns, we'll put our crown on. 
then for 27, we'll put our two fingers out and then our seven fingers out. So for the Pax Romana, if you don't know, the Pax Romana was a great time of peace and prosperity for the Roman Empire. So for peace, so we're going to do the sign language for peace for the Pax Romana. So what I like to show them is, okay guys, we're going to do this for the Pax Romana. We're going to go like this, and then down with our hands out like this. So this is for the Pax Romana. We're divided. I like to make a big X with my hand. And so we'll go divided. Then we'll say for into. We'll go into the Western and Eastern. So divided into Western and Eastern. And then we have barbarians. So this is a fun one. So for barbarians, we'll go like this because they were mean, so we'll go barbarians. And then for defeated, we will go like this and we'll get our sword out. So we'll do defeated. For the Western Empire, we'll make our sign language for W again. So for our last thing, for our date, we'll go AD 476, like this. So just keep it fun, keep it exciting. We'll go through those two, maybe three times. I like to go halfway through and then restart at the beginning again to make sure they're staying with me. And so after we do that two or three times, I'll say, okay, let's put our history song on. Now the history song is faster than what we're doing it in class. So make sure they have it down with the hand motions before you start the song or they'll be so lost. So then we do the song a couple of times. And then for the last couple of times, I like to have the girls sing it once. Okay, girls, your turn, only the girls. And then only the boys. And then let's do it all together one more time. And let's sing it as loud as we can so the other classrooms can hear us. Not shouting, but loud so that I can hear everyone's voice. So that's how we do history for this week. Now we will move on to science. So for science, we're doing inverse. Vertebrates. And what's great about this is that we can start by telling them what invertebrates are. So I like to tell them invertebrates don't have a backbone. Let's start with sponges. So for sponges, I like to pretend like we're bringing out a big sponge. So we'll start with that. If you have a sponge at home, that's so fun. They love for you to pull something out from behind your back and go sponges. Then we have flatworms. So we'll go like this, flatworms. And then for round worms, we'll go like this and make a big round worm. And then for segmented worms, I just pretend like I'm cutting my arms. Segmented worms. So for mollusk, I like to have a clam arm. So I tell them, okay, mollusk, a type of mollusk is a clam. So let's have big clam arms. So mollusks like this. For sea stars, I like to jump out like this, sea stars. And then last, we have arthropods. Now, one of our arthropods is a crab. So I like to get my pincher fingers out and I say, let's get our pincher fingers out. Now we're gonna be arthropods. So as you can see, we have some fun, cute little hand motions. So I like to go through those hand motions a couple of times. For science this week, I like to sing our science facts to the tune of Mary Poppins, A Spoonful of Sugar. So now we will move on to our math. So for nines this week, I get out my Legos. So what do you mean by Legos? So I like to get my big, huge Legos out. And what I like to do is put these little white labels on them. And then I have them put the number, I write the numbers on there. They're already ready to go. I have them in a big Ziploc bag. So that when we say them, I can either give each person a Lego to put on, or if I feel like, you know, it, that may not go very well. I will put them on and have them help me sing it as we put each one and watch it as it grows taller and taller and taller. And at the very end, they get to knock it down. So they love that part. So we'll see, we'll say our nines as we put them on. That's a good way for us to go slowly, not too fast, but also have fun in a hands-on manner. So we'll go through that. I usually like to do that two or three times, depending how it's going with the students. And then we'll get our number cards out. Now, yes, I do have those number cards. Again, they are available. If you look down in the description below, you can get those for absolutely free. Please let me know if you like them or if there's anything else I can provide for you. So for our nines, we will go through and do them with different voices. So I'll have a bag prepared with different voices and I'll have the students pick one out as I walk around the room, one at a time. So I'll have them pull it out. We'll sing our nines with whatever voice we are supposed to use. We also have 
have fun aerobic ones, maybe jumping jacks or push-ups or squats. So that is a great way to do nines. Now let's move on to ten. For tens, this is a great one. A lot of these kids know it, so I have a lot of fun with these with them. So we'll jump up and we'll do tuck jumps and hit our knees as we say our tens. So we'll say 10, 20, and we'll go through. So this one doesn't have a song, it's more of a chant. So we'll go through and say our tens that way. Then we might pat the ground and say our tens. Then we might give high fives to our neighbors like this as we say our tens. I like to say it in a really quiet voice and then a really loud voice. And then we might pick dinosaur or robots, something that each kid can do and that they will like and have fun with. So that's how we do our math, and now we will move on to Latin. So for Latin, for our second declensions. So this one is really cute and really fun. I got this from CC Connected. This is great. This is not mine, but from CC Connected. So if you want something cute where it shows you exactly how to pronounce these, I strongly suggest you go there. But for this one, we've been doing a lot of jumping jacks and a lot of active things already for this class. So what I like to do is now have them sit it down, I'll bring out a ball, and we'll go through our Latin, and I'll t we'll repeat it together, and then we'll say it in slow motion, and then like cheetahs. So I'm just sitting with them around in a circle. And then at the after we've said it three or four times with different speeds and different low and high, we will pass our ball around. So I'll pass it around and say, let's see if we can get this around three times before we're done. Now, no throwing, or we have to put the ball away because I didn't want them throwing the ball everywhere. So we pass it and we try to say it. Now it's become a game and it's really fun. So we see how many times we can say our Latin endings before, before it ends and see if we can get it around four or five times. So they like that. They like the game and the competition of that. So that is our Latin. And now for prepositions, again, we are back to those fun hand motion dances. So I will leave the link below to this video. Someone before me has gone before and done a great video with great hand motions. And I wanna make sure they get credit for that. So I will leave the link below and you can see those for yourself. It's a great song, a great way to practice at home and so much fun for your family. My kids love this song and love the dance. So that is English. So last for our review game. So let me encourage you for your review games that you don't have to reinvent the wheel each week. You can rotate them on a four or five week schedule. That way you can come back to those games again. They remember them and they're fun. So for our review game this week, all you need is post-it notes and a whiteboard. So you're gonna put a little points all over your whiteboard. They might be minus five, they might be plus 10. I like to really use those tens on our tens week. So that's a good one to use. I also like to have jackpot and my oh no one where you subtract 100 points. So you put points over all over your board, then you're gonna put post-it notes over it. And then you're gonna get a dice and you're going to label it our subjects. So you'll have geography, Latin, math, and you'll put those all over your dice. Just tape something on with a little note and put those all over your dice. And I like to have like a bigger dice, so I usually use a tissue box and I just cover it with scrapbook paper and put those subjects on there. You can do it how you want to do it. So they'll roll the dice. I like to divide them in two or three teams. So I like to have two or three kids per team. So you can divide them however you want. Then as they answer, as they roll it, they'll get a subject to do. So I have them roll the dice and whatever subject they land on, that is what we will do for our review. So after they come together as a team, they answer the question. The team member who answered gets to come up and pick out a post-it note. And I like to ham it up really big and go drum roll please. And so they pull it off and they see if they get plus or negative points. So they get really excited about that. Sometimes I like to bring a prize box and sometimes I don't. It just depends on what kind of day we're having. So the kids really love this game. They get so into it. Sometimes they don't even want to leave review because they have so much fun with this game. So that is a fun way to do review. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out my website where you will see one-on-one -on 
one-on-one homeschool consultation link. I also have some freebies available in my description below. So also don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a week of CC Tutor Planning. Thank you so much for stopping by and I look forward to hearing from you in the comments. Let me know if I'm getting behind on the weeks for you too because I do not want to get behind on which weeks you are on. So thank you so much. I will see you later. Goodbye.